Hey everybody, welcome to Providence Church. It is Palm Sunday weekend, so I wanna start by saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Before we begin worship, I have just a couple of things to share with you. The first is Foster 180, a new ministry partner that raises awareness of foster care and trains and prepares people for foster care in Wilson County. We are partnering with them to create care teams to support foster families in our community. And if that sounds like something you wanna be a part of, you can learn more and receive volunteer training on Sunday, May 1st. The second is Care Night. Care Night is a place where you can join and receive support from people walking through life situations similar to your own. Our spring series, which begins this coming Tuesday, April 12th, will focus on how God made each of us unique and for a purpose, and how we can have hope because God's story for each of us is still being written. In some of our long-standing classes, like Alive Hospice Grief Support and Parents of Addicted Loved Ones are also available. So to register for Care Night and Foster 180, just click the images in the program. Well, if you feel led to give financially to the beautiful work God is doing here at Providence, there are a few ways on the screen in which you can do that or click give in the program. And if you're a guest with us today, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. We are so glad you chose to join us on this day of joyful celebration. Welcome to church. Yeah, hey everybody, we are thrilled to see you here tonight. We're so glad to worship with you. I wanna invite you to stand to your feet if you're able. This is the weekend that we get to tell the story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem. When the crowds gathered and shouted, Hosanna, which means Lord, save us, save us. And so tonight we're gonna do that. We're gonna sing Hosanna. We're gonna call upon the Lord, shout our praises, shout our Hosannas. Let's hear these words from Psalm 118 as we set our hearts. Lord, save us. Lord, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the temple of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God. He has been good to us. Take branches in your hands. Join in the march on the day of the feast. March up to the corners of the altar. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will honor you. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Let's lift our voices and sing to our King. Shelters be 
is a king seated among us let every heart receive him now where there is praise he will inhabit there will be grace mercy all around and every burden will be lifted in his presence every trophy will be laid down at his feet there is a name that reigns above all other jesus christ king above all unto the Honor and glory, worthy is he who overcame, buried in shame, risen in power, he is alive.
be seated. Let's pray together, oh King Jesus, Lord of all, our Savior. We cry to you, Hosanna, save us, save us. Father, we uh, come to you in prayer, lifting our hearts, praying that you would teach us today, comfort us, strengthen us, and empower us to follow our Lord wherever he is leading. Some of us, uh, we come to this moment of worship a bit tired or a bit distracted, needing you. And so we ask God that in prayer now, your Holy Spirit would meet with us, spirit unto spirit, deep unto deep, and that we would uh, be able to hear your voice, and that you would lead us, help us, and that we could join in the great chorus around the world of giving praise to Jesus. In his name we pray, amen, amen. It is so great to see you and be with you, those of you here and those of you joining online. Uh, I'm eager to share with you our scripture for today, but first just uh, an invitation to join us Easter weekend, next weekend, five services, Saturday and Sunday, two on Saturday, three on Sunday. And I am asking you, if you're planning to join us, which I hope all of you are, to go to prov.church slash Easter and let us know which service you're coming to. It'll be a great help to prepare for a great weekend. Don't miss Easter weekend at Providence. We cannot wait for you uh, to be there. In fact, why don't we take just a moment and pray for Easter? Okay. Pray for uh, the many people who will be joining us in this room and many, many more who will be joining us online. Uh, It's something that we have been doing, but let's let's take a moment. The next time kind of people gather in here next weekend, uh, we will be telling uh, the greatest part of the greatest story in the whole world. And we've been studying the book of John that the purpose of is that people in hearing about Jesus would believe that he is who he is, the son of God, the Messiah, and by believing in him have life. And so my prayer for next weekend is that people believe in Jesus and are saved from their sins and experience the beginning of eternal life. And so if you would just join me in a prayer in this space as we prepare for uh, the greatest story to be told. Lord, We pray for Easter weekend at Providence and also all around this community and also all around the world. And we pray that as the story of Jesus is told and the name of Jesus is proclaimed, that people will believe and by believing have life in his name. Our prayer here at Providence, just so that we are clear, is to say, we want you here, God. We want you here, God. We desire to meet with you and for you to have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, John chapter 12, beginning with verse 12, says, The next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now, the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed the sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. They said, look how the whole world has gone after him. 2,000 years ago, the religious leaders put their heads together and said, we have a problem. Everybody is paying attention to Jesus. They exaggerated in that moment and said, look, the whole world is going after this one. And uh, this weekend, known as Palm Sunday, because you heard about the branches that were waved, these palm branches. And here's the cool thing, guys. All 
over the world this weekend, people are going after Jesus. The Pharisees with their ridicule actually brought a prophecy uh, that is being made true even in our time that the whole world is going after Jesus. I wanted you to see some images. This first one is a place called Gaza. The picture was taken in a militarized zone. It's Palm Sunday just a few years ago, and people are marching in the streets saying that Jesus is the king. This next one is from a Christian church in Iraq just a few years ago. Palm Sunday, these folks gathered there. It was significant because it was the first time in decades that the Christians had been allowed to worship in what had been an Islamic state, but now they had found the freedom to worship Christ. They gathered in this place to say that Jesus is the King. Parades happen all over the world, like this one in Germany, where the people fill the streets on Palm Sunday to say the one Jesus of Nazareth, the one who died on the cross, he is our King. As you can imagine in the Vatican, people come 10, hundreds of thousands coming to say yes to this Jesus. Will you still save us today? This next image is from Poland where they were going down the street with their version of Jesus on the donkey. This next one is Pakistan where they took their palm leaves and gathered and shouted in the streets. Two images, my favorite ones from the Philippines where children come and worship the king. This last one is from Jerusalem in a place called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It is actually the the place most historians believe where the tomb of Jesus was. And people marched down from the Mount of Olives on Palm Sunday down the same path that Jesus' donkey came. And they go through the city down a road called the Via Della Rosa where Jesus carried his cross and was crucified just a few yards away from this place. And on Palm Sunday, all over the world, including the place where Jesus actually walked and talked there worshiping. Look how the whole world has gone after him. There are three signifying words or images from Palm Sunday, three enduring unique things about the story that make it such a memorable one. They are the palm branches, the donkey, and the shout. So if you've never heard of Palm Sunday, uh, or maybe you've heard about a hundred times where you're like, what's that story about again? If you can remember the palm branches, the donkey and the shout, you will be able to hold your own in any Palm Sunday conversation, which I'm sure there's gonna be many that you're gonna be a part of. The palm branches are memorable. Sort of a unique thing that people grab branches off trees, but palm branches in the scriptures were a sign of victory, a sign of jubilation. But the, the image of this story that we read is that the people were just so excited that they grabbed branches off trees and waved them at Jesus as he came down the street. They laid them on the ground along with their coats so that Jesus could ride over them. It's a great thing to think about the palm branches, but it's not what we're gonna focus on today. Uh, The donkey gets a lot of attention. Sometimes a whole Palm Sunday sermon can be about this donkey. And the reason is, is Jesus comes riding into the city, not as a conquering Lord or a warrior on what you would imagine, a horse, you know, a white horse. Jesus comes riding in on a humble donkey, the colt of a donkey, a little donkey. And so the donkey makes us see that our king is different. Our king is humble. Our king will not conquer in the ways of the world. All you have to see is a grown man (laughs) sitting on a little donkey and your heart shifts a little bit. Whole uh, uh, Palm Sunday sermons can be about the donkey, but I don't wanna focus on that today. I'm thinking next year's the year of the donkey, okay? So come back next year. Today, my heart is captivated by the shout, the shout of Hosanna. Uh, The people saw Jesus and they started shouting at him. The word Hosanna means save. Uh, More accurately, it probably uh, means save us. And if you really kind of drill down to the root of this Hebrew word, it actually has a tense to it, meaning uh, Hosanna most likely means please save us now. Please save us now. And the people were not saying it in the streets that day. They were not whispering it to their neighbors. They did not write it on placards and hold it up. The word began to stir around in their hearts. as They grabbed the branches off of the trees and they saw Jesus riding on the donkey and they shouted, Hosanna, please save us now. 
There's actually, this might surprise you, a lot of shouting in the Bible. Why? Because the Bible tells the story of people and people shout sometimes. No, any, no shouters in here, I, I would think. But uh, people shout sometimes. And in the Bible, shouting was used for different reasons. It was a war cry. Uh, there was a time that shouts brought down a wall in Jericho. Uh, shouting was used as an, a way of making an oath. There would be shouting when the Ark, of Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant would come down the streets in a parade. They shouted for joy. There are mentions of loud cries of grief, loud cries and shouts of pain. And the Bible is a story of God's people and people shout sometimes. In our world today, people are shouting, sometimes even shouting in the streets. I witnessed recently people shouting in the streets over gas prices, over the war in Ukraine, uh, racial inequality. People still go to the streets and lift their voices. But I read this week, there were a new study out of Switzerland that studied the loud shouts from people. Here's the name of the study. It was called the Neurocognitive Processing Efficiency for Discriminating Human Non-Alarm Rather Than Alarm Screen Calls Study. <laughs> I'll give you the summary, okay? <laughs> people shout for four reasons. Four reasons they found that people will lift their voice and shout. The first is great pain, physical or emotional. The second was great anger. The third, great fear. And the fourth, great joy. Great joy. When Jesus came into the town, the people started shouting. Were they in pain? Were they angry? Were they afraid? Were they filled with joy? Um, my answer to that is yes. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say it was all of those things. They shouted, save us, because they were hurting. They shouted, save us, because they were angry at the oppressive powers of government that were coming against them. They shouted, save us, because they were afraid for their future. And they shouted, save us now, because this great joy they must have felt when the king rode down the street of their holy city. They were, they were like, he's on a donkey. <laughs> like, somebody get me a palm branch, you know? <laughs> I'm about to shout. Uh, I don't know how you would feel if the king, Jesus, came riding down your street, but you might shout, please save us now. I want to ask you a question. What have you been shouting at Jesus? Where's my miracle, maybe? Uh, I need you. Save me. Uh, some of us shouting, you are worthy, Jesus, of all of this. What have you been? Think about it. I know you probably haven't been shouting at Jesus. Some of you might have out loud, but what, what has your heart been shouting at Jesus? I started thinking, uh, did Jesus ever shout? You know, this story is, a, is about people shouting to Jesus or at Jesus, but I kind of wondered, like, did Jesus ever shout? And I, I assume he probably did. There's some stories where we could imagine Jesus shouting one where he speaks to the wind and the waves during a storm. He might have had to get his voice a little bit louder to that, but who knows? He's the son of God. He might have just whispered to it and it calmed down. There is an instance in John chapter 7 that we'll get to in our study of John where he was in the temple. It actually says Jesus spoke in a loud voice. Uh, it seems to get up over all of the noise and all of the things that were going on in the temple. So, you know, that may have been a shout, but this exact uh, word, the word that is used in John chapter 12 that we translate into the English shout. It's actually um, only used a few times in the Bible, and all three instances are in the book of John. So I find that interesting. And one of those instances where the word is translated as shout, it's Jesus that is shouting. It actually takes place in the chapter immediately before John chapter 12. So in the story, immediately before the Palm Sunday narrative, we find Jesus shouting. Here's what Jesus shouts. He shouts, Lazarus, come out. The same word that's used for the people shouting Hosanna is used for Jesus' exclamation of calling his friend to come out of the grave. Let me read you a couple of verses. It says, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice. That's a Greek word, ekraugosin. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And his friend, Lazarus, who'd been dead four days, walks out of the grave. 
Here's, it says, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. That's the seventh miracle in the book of John. We'll spend a whole week on it, but I needed you to see it because here Jesus is shouting. And I really think this moment of Jesus shouting in John chapter 11 and the people shouting in John chapter 12 are linked. I think John was a specific and intentional author who uses this word only three times. The first in the instance where Jesus shouts and the second in the instance when the people are shouting. The reason I say that is because we need to understand that Jesus shouting for one of them to come alive is what leads to the people crying for Jesus to save them. I mean, directly, that's what John tells us. I just read it, but you probably didn't even notice because it seems like a, a strange footnote. But John chapter 12 says, the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb. So this is in the Palm Sunday narrative, okay? The crowd that was with Jesus when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. What that means is the miracle that Jesus performed of Lazarus coming alive is what led to the crowds being in the streets on Palm Sunday. It goes on to say many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. So because Jesus shouted at Lazarus, all these people wanted to show up and they're now proclaiming as the king. Remember in our study of the miracles that the purpose is not always just the physical healing, but the purpose is so that people will see who Jesus is. So when Jesus lifts his voice to Lazarus, it's all, it's cool for Lazarus, right? <laughs> you know, but the moment is for the whole people of God to see that Jesus is who he says he is. The shout to Lazarus leads to the shouts for Jesus in the streets. And when we hear that Jesus has the shout that brings new life, we raise our voices to him. Every Sunday, every Thursday, we do that here, right? We raise our voices, save us, Jesus, save us now. And now this weekend, all over the world, Palm Sunday, the whole world has gone after him. And we raise as a world, our pain-filled, anger-filled, fear-filled, joy-filled voices and say, hey, Jesus, if you're thinking about a time to save us, we're raising our voices so you'll notice us and saying, let it be now. That's what this weekend is about. It's the people of God joining their voices in the cry, the same cry that Jesus has. His cry to save us, we're saying, yeah, Jesus, let's do it. And if you're looking for a day on the calendar, let's do it now. And that's why this weekend in the Ukraine and in Pakistan and in Iraq and in homes in China and in places where they're not allowed to worship, they, like us, will be saying, Hosanna, this is the time that we need you, Jesus. That word, shout that John uses out of the mouth of Jesus, Lazarus, come out. And then out of the people's mouth, save us is used again one other time. You were wondering, right? Where's the third time that it's used? There's one other reference with this Greek word that's used in those placing. And the shouting in this instance comes out of the mouths of the same people who had been saying, Hosanna. And this time they shouted, it's in John chapter 18 and John chapter 19. This time they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. I can't even shout it, guys. Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate, the one they were shouting out, the government leader who had the authority to do this, he said, shall I crucify your king? Why would he say that? Because days before in his city, they had been shouting, he's the king, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And now he hears out of their same mouths. And here's was their response. They shouted it again. They said, we have no king, no king, but Caesar. And over the years, guys and gals like me have told this story. And we try to make that crowd sound like such a bad crowd. You know, we tell this story and a guy like me tries to build the suspense and say, the same crowd that shouted Hosanna shouts crucify. And we hear that. And what we feel is, I can't stand, I can't stand that crowd. I can't believe that crowd. But here's the deal, guys. That crowd is us. 
It's us. It's our world. Our world where the same people have good intentions and selfishness and pride. The same people have a voice where they find their courage and stand up for what is right. And then it seems in the same breath, join an angry mob that ends up hurting people. It's the same crowd because there has never been a crowd loud enough to right all the wrongs. Am I telling you not to shout? No way. (laughs) People shout, right? Sometimes when they're angry, when they're fearful. But the only one who can make things right is the one whose voice brings dead things back to life. I have one more thing to tell you. And that is before the story is over, Jesus shouts again. So you need to know that. He's hanging on the cross. He's literally about to die. They lift up vinegar to his lips because his mouth is so parched. And Jesus shouts again, a shout of pain and anger and fear and joy. Listen to it. It's from Matthew. It says, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, at the moment of Jesus' shout, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. So once again, Jesus' shout breaks open a tomb. It says the bodies of many people who had died were raised to life. At the end of time, there's going to be a a war. Uh, I want want you to kind of picture the whole story here, okay? And at the end of time, there's going to be a war in heaven. The Bible tells us that the angels led by the archangel Michael are going to go to war with evil, specifically the devil, who is described as a dragon and a serpent. Is this weird enough for y'all? Okay, this is what the Bible tells us. So there's going to be a war in heaven between God's holy angels and between evil. And heaven is going to win. And it says the dragon is going to be hurled to the earth. And when that happens, there is going to be a shout so loud from heaven that earth will hear it. And the Bible tells us what that shout is going to say. And it was written down by John in the book of Revelation. And this is what the shout from heaven will sound like. John says, then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last. Salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him, here's how, by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony. So the evil one is defeated by the one who hung on the cross and shouted and the ones who come after who shout with him their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Jesus shouts and dead people come to life. Jesus shouts and the enemy is defeated. Jesus shouts and we are saved. And here's the deal, guys. We shout on this weekend, Palm Sunday, Hosanna. But one day our voices will change to another shout and our voices will not change to crucify him. Our shout will be he's the king. He is worthy. He is seated on his throne. We worship him. We adore him. And so what we do this weekend is we rehearse. We rehearse for the day when we will join together. And the one who is seated on the donkey is seated on the throne. Our Lord, our rightful king in his place. And we will join the great shout of heaven. No more death. No more dying. No more tears. No more cancer. No more suffering, no more war, no more brokenness, 
no more devastation, no more lost children. And we will say, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. Let us worship together. Would you stand as we worship? Our Jesus is indeed worthy. Thank you for joining me back here. That last scripture Jacob shared, Revelation 12, 11, that says, and they have defeated him by the blood of the lamb and by their testimony is such a beautiful reminder of the power of our own stories of how Jesus raised us from death to life. 
Every time we are faithful to share and spread the stories of what Jesus has done and is still doing in our lives, people take notice and the news of Jesus spreads, just like what happened when Lazarus was raised to life. It still happens that way. We have been saved, so we shout to Jesus, but we also shout for Jesus so that other people hear about him and begin to follow him and are raised to new life in him. And when that happens, the darkness in this world is pushed back even more. We have a part in the defeat of the evil one here and now. And I just think one of the best ways that we can do that while sharing our stories is to invite someone to church on Easter. It's always a good time to invite someone to church, but Easter is one of the best times because we hear the story of how Jesus defeated death on a cross so that everyone can live. So check out prof.church slash Easter for our service times. And if you're joining in person, don't forget to save your spot. If you're joining online, I will see you here next Sunday at 8, 9.30 and 11 a.m. Central. Don't forget to invite someone. Well, if you're a guest with us today, I would love for you to fill out our guest form so we know that you've worshiped with us. That link should be available for you to click on right now, and I will be in touch with a small gift for you. If you missed our announcements before the service started, don't forget to check out our digital program at prov.church program. One more thing before I go. I hope to see all of you for our Holy Thursday service, either in person or online at prop.church at 6.30 p.m. this Thursday night. And now, let me send you out with this blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Go in peace.